do clubs, clubs, drink PBRs, ours, then do drugs, drugs. I'm house and I'm sitting here with Ya, Ya Star from Ninja Sonic. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We're, we're just gonna start from the very beginning. So, which borough in New York did you grow up in? I grew up in the Bronx. Um, yeah, just grew up in the Bronx by Yankee Stadium. Cool ass place, cool ass uh, learning experience. Just to just be a, a, a anywhere you grow up is cool, yeah. but the Bronx was something that's very special and right. it still is special. Like people are like always oh, Brooklyn and yo from Queens is like I'm from the Bronx. Right, right. You, you I feel mean, me? How unique is the Bronx compared to living in other boroughs such as? Manhattan, Queens, or Brooklyn, you think? Uh, well, for me, it's, um, when you're from the Bronx, it's a good question, like, you you learn certain things about yourself, and then when you go to other boroughs, like, I remember being a kid, and being like, Brooklyn, I don't want to go to Brooklyn, fuck Brooklyn. Right. No, and no pun intended, but, like, now I live in Brooklyn. But everybody from all over the place, like I remember being in like Paris and they're like, oh, New York, these guys are from New York. Yo, Brooklyn. And then I remember just one girl being like, I, I want to meet somebody from the Bronx. And my bandmate being like, yo, he's from the Bronx. And the whole room was like, <gasps> it was almost like I had the fucking Tommy gun, like, D -d 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 like he's from the Bronx. like. Don't fuck with people from the Bronx. They are real motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of crazy. It's like, well, I'm the nicest dude ever. Like, but it, it teaches you to, to how to be, um, how you can intimidate someone just because. Yeah. Like, you got that kind of, like, street mentality. Yeah. When it comes to, like, kind of, like, you can approach things a little bit more intensely, like you know how to, because the Bronx yeah. is a more intense place. It is, it very much is. Like uh, I was in um, San Francisco, sorry. I was in San Francisco and some girl was like, yo, you guys like were here the other day. I was out there for an art show I had and she was like, Yo, so bro, and me and my boy Sterling, shout out to Sterls. We were like, we looked at each other like this, like, so bro? What the fuck is so bro? Yeah. Like, uh, what the fuck is that? That's South Bronx. Yeah, that's what they kind of call South Bronx. Yeah, like we were like, Coast, what the fuck is that? Uh, we never heard of no so bro. Uh, and she yeah. just like felt like, Oh damn, they like kind of played me, but we weren't trying to play it. See, that's some Bronx shit. Like, yo, I wasn't even trying to play you. Yo, congratulations, you played yourself. And, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so my next question was actually like, you were an avid skateboarder growing up, right? Yeah. What what age did you start skating? Well, I all right, believe it or not, I started rollerblading oh. when I was well, like 12, 13. Malali Park was the place around the corner from my house. It was a BMX park, and it's the only place that we could, like, rollerblade and bikers, whatever. Would, like, it's a, it's actually the longest running um, skate park or bike park that exists in New York City. Right. And that was free. Yeah. I got to the point where I was like pro amateur at rollerblading or aggressive inline skating and um, I got to the point where like I was getting not getting hurt but like you know you go to the doctor and they're like tell my mama if he keeps doing this by the time he's 21 he's not going to be able to walk so obviously my mom was like you can't do that anymore so I was like all right I'll start skating so I started skating when I was like 16 17 years old and I was like, well, if you can't jump up it, don't jump down it. Because, I mean, I was jumping off of fucking buildings for no ass reason. Like, yo, I'm going to 540 this, this spot. Oh, I'm going to hit this crazy kink row and blah, blah, blah. But then when I started skating, I was like, yo, this is fucking ill. And it 
I still look at uh, the terrain differently. Right. Like when people are walking down the street, I'll be like, oh shit, that's a fucking dope ass spot. Like, I want to do a trick on this. But now uh, skateboarding has become the same as what rollerbladers can do. Like, yo, this motherfucker just really did some crazy shit on a fucking 15 stair, 17 stair handrail, or even the six or seventh handrail. Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, this is nuts. For I, you, what? What do you say was the most inspiring thing about skateboarding in New York? Um, graffiti and uh, person-wise, Mark Gonzalez. He's a G. He just looks at the weirdest shit and like, I'm gonna do that on this, or like, like, like you're saying, like, ter- like uh, the terrain of things. Like, that's cool because no one sees it the way I see it. And I can paint a picture that way, graffiti-wise. Like, it's not about what's there. How did that happen? And how long did that take? Right. And how do you get away with doing that? And it's wide in the open. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, when did Ninja Sonic first come about? And how did it? Oh, this is a <laughs> this is some funny ass shit. Yeah. I gotta fucking drink to this one. Cheers. <laughs> Yo, so I I used to get made fun of. I'm, I'm into punk rock music, hardcore. I'm into all types of music. So me and my friend Sterling, I, like. I always dress different. I'm wearing tight pants. And motherfuckers is like, you know how you be like, yo, yo, you old dick in the butt ass nigga. Yo, this old such and such in the face ass nigga. Yo, look at this tight pants wearing ass nigga right here. And like you be in the store, like the chicken spot or the bodega, like, yo, this fucking tight pants wearing ass. And you look around like, this nigga really trying to, play, like, you trying to play me? Like, damn, but you like, seven deep and it's just me I'm gonna snuff one of y'all but I'm gonna get fucked up is it worth it no so one day I'm walking down Fordham Road and this I was like yo I wanna holler at this this shorty and I was like yo and she's like uh oh, he got a fucking girl jeans on fucking tight pants wearing ass nigga over here trying to holler at me like fuck out of here I'm like and Sterling was like, yo, don't worry, because one day everybody's gonna dress like us and it's gonna be cool. And I was like, it doesn't matter, because we all are cool. So, no no pun intended, me and uh, uh, shout outs to Team Wolf, he used to be in Ninja Sonic. Me and him originated Ninja Sonic. We had a studio in our house in uh, Bushwick of a. Uh, Dodworth Street, where Lone Wolf is, above there, and uh, we were DJing out on uh, the north side of uh, Williamsburg, and this motherfucker, like I was, out I, I, like we we come home wasted, and I'm like, yo, I'm a tight pants wearing ass nigga, what? Oh, like, cause it was like, what? Like. I don't give a fuck. Like, what? I'm with tight pants wearing ass nigga. Uh-huh. And he was like, yo, say that again. Go in the, go in the, go in the booth and just say that. And he recorded me just screaming. I'm t-. I was just like mad. And like, yo, why the fuck are you going to try to play me? Like, why do people try to play me? I'm just being me. I'm being myself. So... It just spawned from there. We made it a joke. And it, it was actually supposed to be, uh, be called Hipster Sonic. Because they're like, yo, this black kid is a hipster. I, like, if people know what a hipster is, that's like a, a, a jazz term for like a cool, cool collected person. But 
we made that song and then it went viral on YouTube. We put the fucking uh, 106 and Park logo as a joke on it and put the video out. Like we made a video, put it out just as a joke. Then all of a sudden it's like, yo, people want to book you. I'm like, wait, I gotta like, we didn't even make so other Tight Pants was the first song you guys first ever made. First fucking song. And you guys, like it just, went viral instantly yes like this is like back in like what 2008 2007 or 8 yeah wow so it went viral and then <laughs> I was like oh man I would like have to perform this song like this is very controversial and I don't like I didn't care it's like ah oh, whatever man like, fuck it let's do it yeah. And I made stupid songs like I'm on the internet, bitch. I'm fucking famous. Whatever. I got a MySpace. I got a Gmail. I got a Facebook. But I don't do Friendster. It was just all jokes. Wow. And then it became like kind of serious along the lines like like I, I, I made a song like HIV is going to be the death of me. Just all these joking ass songs and like somebody going to get pregnant. Somebody gonna get pregnant. You better watch out. You better watch out because somebody gonna get pregnant. I'm not trying to do that. But who that? Who that? I'm not trying to do that. I said who that? But who that? But somebody gonna get pregnant. <laughs> but not by me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like making these funny ass songs. So uh, I'm gonna bring you into me and my bandmate. Telly. Telly. It's a phenomenal rapper. And he heard Tight Pants and he met Team Wolf. And he's like, yo, wait a minute. I know this kid. I saw him at Go Skate Day. Yada, yada, yada. So it's like organically formed. It was like Voltron. It was like, choo, 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 let your powers combine. Boom. So it was like. <laughs> He pushed me to learn how to write raps because I'm like, yo, I'm like the Nate dog. I just make funny hooks and I just want people to have fun and party. And right. also, I want black kids, white kids, age, everybody to just be in one spot and feel safe and they can wild the fuck out in the middle of the hardest areas. Like, our first show, Mosh Pit started because... All my friends from High Crew 57, all punk kids, hardcore kids, started mosh pits to fucking dance music that I was making. And I was like, and I'm, I'm still making, but it's like, it's crazy to be like, wow. Now I look around like, whoa, this person and that person would never get along. I even have friends that they're like, yo, I never met a white person in my life. And now I have a white girlfriend. Yo, I just got married to this white girl yeah. that, like, I was at your show. I have a friend that he, my friend Seattle Steve, him and his girlfriend are married now. He met me on a random ass note, like, yeah. at a party through graffiti and breakdancing. Holy shit. And, like, I had him stay at my house that week. He was just in New York. He met his girl at a Ninja Sonic show. And now they're married and they're in Norway. I actually want to ask you something. What was the craziest thing that actually ever happened at an Indusonic show? Craziest thing? All right. So, I mean, it's, I could tell you like 12, but we were playing at the Chicken Hut. Big Frida. It was Ninja Sonic, Big Frida. I love Big Frida, yo. Love you, sis. Yo in the back of one little room because it's like a it's a DIY show it's put together by like yo we're gonna have a show we got these bands traveling and Ninja Sonic is playing Big Frida you're playing just before she, Frida blew up there was a corner in this like area yeah it's a DIY so when you people just We'll take a piss anywhere. People were like, it was like, like a warehouse. 
in a warehouse, yes. Oh, yeah. So people were like peeing in corners, like, you know, oh, I'm gonna take a pee over here. Yeah. And girls were like copping squats. I went to go take a piss, and this girl is getting eaten out. It's in the corner. Like, <laughs> getting freaky. I'm like, what the? I was just kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is crazy. And it was so fucking sweaty in that place that, like, I had, to, like, my shirt was drenched. And another homie was like, yo, here, take my Smith shirt and take that home and walk home with that. And I grabbed my skateboard and I was like, I'm out. I'm going home, man. Like, this is too much for me. But I saw someone having sex oh, while sure. people were, like, taking a piss. Like, that shit was corners. crazy. Uh, she so was in one corner. It was three people over there. They didn't oh, give a fuck. I'm like, that's crazy. It's nuts, yo. That's <laughs> gross as fuck. I was like, God damn it, man. Like this, I'm not promoting this. I just came here to like perform and have fun. Yeah. But damn, you're having that much fun that you don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. wow. that's great. <laughs> damn, dude. I can tell you more other stories about different situations, but that was a crazy one. Now I was shocked. That shit sobered me up. I was like, <laughs> "Judge!" <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> yo, wait, wait. he's like, "Stop!" He's like, "Yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> I'm just thinking about like my mind is just running through like that whole scenario. Like, damn, like I don't even know. What I Yo, you just brought back like a crazy memory that I don't want you want to know about. <laughs> but, not on duty, not even judge duty. <laughs> so it seemed like there are so many different like genres and styles at play. Like, how did you marry all those? Like, what styles did you marry together when it came to the whole aesthetic of Ninja Song? It was just me just thinking of everything I love and putting it into one place. Once I started, like, like I said. Tight Pants was about me rebelling against people that tried to shit on me. Never in a, like a physical way, it's like, yo, making fun of me. It's like that Charlie Brown syndrome. When someone is making fun of you and you feel that you're like, but what am I doing wrong? What, what am I doing wrong? Like, damn. Oh, I like Morrissey. I like Iron Maiden. I like James Brown. I like Michael Jackson. I like Coltrane. I like Dolly Parton. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all that shit. It's just a gumbo of like emotion. Yeah. I found that era of music like during that time to be so interesting only because there's like artists like Matt and Kim. Yeah, like Kim and Kim. oh. And they're pushing like this almost like electronic, like pop and like rap, hip hop, like thing. And then while also like having like this very like liberating narrative yeah. where like, oh, everyone's invited to like be part of this yeah. community in this scene. And uh, you're very much like, I feel like your music was even like probably the most wild between like all those artists during that time. So. It's funny that you say that about, um, like, Matt and Kim. Those are my friends. Yeah. And Matt and Kim, Japanther, Team Robespierre, um, the Death Set, all those bands, I would go and see them. Even if I had to go to work and I was carrying records to fucking go and play, I would go to their shows before, watch their shows, and I'd be the first person, like, crowd surfing and like having fun it's like yo word knowing all their songs and it's all DIY do it yourself movement and each one of them was like before I became close friends with all of those groups of people they were like Jaja you need to start a band and I was like yeah I guess so I don't know yeah. they're like nah you have so much energy and a lot to say you need to start a band. And then I, maybe a year, two years later, came home and was like, oh, I'm a tight pants, and that sparked that. But because of those bands, I wouldn't be Ninja Sonic. 
Like, I'm Jaja, I'm Jostar, I'm Ben Roby, I'm Bartman. But there would be not, no Ninja Sonic without that inspiration to, like, let that uh, meteor explode and share the feelings that I have for everyone, with everyone. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing that, like, seeing from a distance how many kids I inspire to, like, yo, be yourself. And I, that's the one thing I always say at the end of every show. Yo, don't ever be afraid to be yourself. No matter who you are, always be yourself. Make sure that, like, yo, if I want to go outside and in the middle of the summer and fucking put a goddamn sweater, two sweaters on, and a flannel, and people look at me weird, yeah, motherfucker, look at me weird because I'm enjoying myself. Right. I'm enjoying my day, and it makes me feel good in my own skin who I am. Right. That's That's... Crazy. It's it's not crazy, but you know. Yeah, uh, I also like, dude. When I was looking into you guys, like, and just looking at the clips of you guys' live shows, and just like, even just like fan like videos of just you guys like performing on rooftops, like, yo, you guys took over Brooklyn. Like, how did you guys even manage to like pull that off? Well, I don't know. It's like it was the love of, like I was just saying. Um, it was a love of showing kids they have a place where they can feel wanted and safe and appreciate it and no one's gonna judge them. Like, you could turn your back, you know what I mean? And not worry about someone like trying to fuck with you. It's about just being yourself and that exposed a lot of kids to be like, word. I want to do this, I want to do that, and like, I was afraid to do this, or, oh man, I used to be afraid to walk down this block because I look like this. I don't give a fuck no more, I'm walking down that block, like after a Ninja Sonic show, like, I'm gonna walk down this block because I had a fucking good time, and I don't give a fuck if I lose a fight, if someone wants to fight me, at least they know I'm not afraid. And it was like giving it's, it was just, I don't know how we did it exactly, but I felt like I threw out some of my heart and, and, and uh, courage. Yeah. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Like, you have, you have a team. Everyone has like a little bit of a, um, uh, they're afraid of something. But you talk to your friend, you talk to your friend, you talk to your friend, you talk to your friend. At the end of the day, what they trying to do? Help her get to where? That big guy. And then, guess what? That big guy was the most afraid of everyone else because he saw that they weren't afraid of him anymore. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Damn, dude. Yeah, no, I mean, just looking back on that era, I was just like, wow, like, I remember this time, like, so definitively. So I was like really young during that time, first getting into music, and I was like, wow, like this is like the sound that like definitely like inspired me when I was younger. And I didn't know, I didn't know much about Ninja Sonic at that time. Maybe when I was like, at the time I was like 13 or even younger. And but I do remember just like, wow, like these guys made like a huge impact to the New York and Brooklyn community wow there's like all these kids just like showing support so you guys like definitely did like a really like great thing and then I also realized you guys took kind of like a long hiatus after all yeah that. so what was going on between that period of like, well, was, like 2013 to like yeah well I got sick of touring touring is a lot of work and it's hard to have like a uh, relationship with like a, like a romantic relationship I had a girlfriend at the time and the understanding of like yo I'm gonna be in Europe for two months then I get back and then like oh I gotta go back on the road and be around the world uh, well around the US and then oh man I have two weeks and then I have to go back on tour and it just fucked up my 
my whole my whole energy of like, yeah. all right, man, like the meteor is out there, but it needs to rebuild. Damn, how and many shows were you guys playing like a month? You was, uh... Dude, uh, one time we played. Uh, one time we went to Europe, and I hate airplanes now. Imagine being on an airplane and going through customs every goddamn day. Like, you wake up, 8 a.m., yo, airport, boom, land, ah, uh, I'm just, I'm so tired. But you, you, you're living that rock and roll life where you're drinking every day and then you forget to, like, eat well and yada yada. So you're exhausted, but you have to be... 100 because this is the first time these people have seen me this is the first time these people have seen me this is the first time these people have seen me like we uh we made a song in uh amsterdam uh global all around the world no matter where i've been i had no problems just fitting in i'm global global i'm global global my phone don't work but baby i do said hi she replied but i didn't have a clue i'm global global and like one line I say, I've been everywhere, man, with just a skateboard in my hand. Hucklebuggy fitting it with no bag. Hotel tonight, it's the quality in. Two, two, two days from now, we meet Sweet Ten. I'm Roby, Roby, international Roby, Roby. Both planes, trains, and automobiles, gotta keep it moving, got another country to kill. I'm Roby, Roby, international Roby. Roby. That was the birth, the second birth of Ben Roby, the nickname. Because I literally went on a, I literally went <laughs> on the plane. My friend got bit by a dog. So I went to Woodhall. Mind you, I'm supposed to be leaving the country. Yeah. I went to Woodhall to see if she was okay. Like, all right, I got to go. So I didn't have time to pack my clothes. So what I did was I put on like three sweaters, three jackets, and a big jacket, and I put a bunch of underwears and a bunch of socks in my pocket and grabbed my skateboard, and that's all I left with. Wow. So it was like, whoa, like, like, uh, I like, like Huckleberry fitting it with no bag. It's like I'm just traveling with my skateboard yeah. and the the clothes I got on. So I was like, oh, I can change this today. Put this on. Oh, I can change this. And then I was like buying little shit here and there. And obviously, like, all right, buy a, a little bag of... And like, I brung home more than I left with. And then on that trip, my skateboard got lost yeah. in the airport. But it got back to me, like... A month later, like, they showed up to my house, like, hey, uh, I was like, damn, my skateboard has been to more countries than me. Like, how the fuck did it get all the way over here? This is crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. So, how many shows in one day? How many shows yeah, in... Yeah, how many shows in one month? In one month? Yeah. It was, like, good... 20 shows in one month, two months, like, maybe, like, 46. And you would do that for, like... How long, like, would you say, like, your touring period lasted? Uh, overseas? In we, general, just like, yeah, overseas, actually. Overseas, it'd be like, and in total, like, six months I've done overseas. Oh, shit. Um, it was kind of cool, because we would, like, be like, all right, we can go overseas, then we can come back. By the time it's March, it'll be warm. If you go to South By, which is not the same anymore, which is weird. Yeah. And um, we just would try to beat the winner. Like, just be somewhere else and beat the winner. Yeah. Yeah. So, how does it feel to be back recording? I know you guys started back in 2019. Yeah. Um, feels good. Like, um, I try to write music as much as I can, but you can't force it. You have to, like, everything that I write about is, everything I write about is real life. Like, I, I don't talk about shit that I, it's never happened to me or never done. Like, I'm not going to be like, yo, I come through with the hammer, bing, bing, boom, bop. Like, nigga, I'm not 
trying to kill nobody or yeah or no like I, I'll be like yo I'll come through with the spray can disrespect your whole shit bang bing boom say something let's get it you know what I mean like but that's still not me because I would never play myself like that a lot of people do that in music now where they're like yo I'm doing all this and I'm doing all that and I'm doing all this when it's like really you're not doing that and I just lent you like five hours, so what the fuck you talking about? Knock it off. You know what I mean? Stop playing yourself. Put a chord in your ass. You played yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. Do we have a, are we going to have an album coming out anytime soon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we are going to have an album coming out, but you know, with the politics of the music industry, right. it always works that way where it's like, yeah. it's just hot enough. And that's, that's another thing that's kind of, uh, uh, cool to talk about because a lot of kids think like yo I made this song I'm the shit I'm good music industry is like yo I'm gonna open up a bank account right yo sign a contract that's funny that's a funny quote that inside joke like you sign the contract right right and then they're like, all right, you're on. You're like, I'm on. Yo, here's 100 Gs. Yeah. Bang. That's like your advance. Yeah, right. here's your advance. Right. Your advance means you need to pay it back. Yeah, exactly. But your advance also is paying for your recording time. Studio time. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. So you're really not making any money. Right. <laughs> you make your money off of touring and right. selling your merchandise that's right. actually going back to that advance. Right. So with that being said, it's like kids think that they're going to fucking win when it's like, yo, do it yourself. I made it here by doing it myself. I use all the tools without even knowing. I use YouTube making a stupid video of a stupid song, which tight pants. I really hate playing that song because it's like, I'm a tight pants wearing ass nigga. Like, damn, I just said, I call myself a nigga. I'm not a nigga. I'm a fucking human being, a black man, and a strong black man that the whole song was about making fun of people making fun of me. So the cliche in that is, someone else being like what nigga like yo you can't your white friends be can't say what nigga it's like well i'm never gonna sing that song again because if you feel that way but then you say nigga yo yo my nigga i'm not your nigga you're not my nigga i'm your boy i'm your bruh i'm your brother you my sis that's my brother. That's my brother. White, black, Chinese, Asian, whatever the fuck. You are my brothers. We are family. We are united. And we need to stay that way. People don't fucking understand that shit. I'm not your nigga. You're not my nigga. I'm your brother. I'm your sister. I'm your uncle. I'm your aunt. I'm everything to you. I'm your soul. I'm trying to keep you alive. Damn, I got mad spiritual for him. <laughs> no, but it's like that was. Ah. Yeah. Damn. How's the pandemic been for you so far? Uh, it's, it, it. it's been all right. Like um, painting a lot, drawing a lot, writing music whenever I can. Um, whenever I feel inspired to write, like I was saying before, like. It's, inspiration like you just can't write a song and be like yo blah, 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 blah. it's like no I want to talk about something that happened like um, me and the homie uh, Ian uh, from the band sorry the band formerly known as Japanther he's in Howard Inn now and he uh, our friend Ricky Powell rest in peace Ricky rest in peace to Rick but he made a jazz beat and he asked me to write a verse on that song. So it's like, I have personal experience with Ricky. So it's only fair and I'm honored that he asked me because I can tell stories 
or tell a story about Ricky that's great that people can relate to yeah. and be like wow damn that's kind of cool you know what I mean yeah. well we're definitely coming up on the end of this interview but I did want to ask one last question yes is there any wisdom that you want to pass on to the younger generation to inspire them um always be yourself never forget who you are in the inside. Um, it's important to love yourself. When you look in the mirror, say, I'm the shit. I'm the best. I'm the best thing going. If they don't like it, they better learn to love it. Because I am the best thing going. And educate yourself as much as possible. And if your friend thinks you're like, oh, you, like, you pussy because you only do this, Fuck them and fuck their life and everything they stand for because that's not your friend. Because your friend would not lead you into dark. Lead yourself to the light. We're already in the dark. Lead yourself to the light. We've already been in the dark since we got out the womb. It's up to you to make that choice for yourself. Just be yourself. I love you. Yeah, yo, love you. Thank you so much, man. No, thank you. Now that wraps it up. Thank you so much, Jaja. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, man. Anytime. Anytime, y'all. We out here. Yo, shout out to Homeless Penthouse. We out here full time, that part time. Yo, pinkies up all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I know, and I know, you probably think you're too cool for school. Just a minute ago, I was in your shoes. Matter of fact, I'm still in them 1,200 in them I'm ashamed I was with them I don't miss them good riddance Back to regular schedule program